would like to take you on a mysterious journey back in time. Yes, that's right folks, it's a bit of bonus content today and as such we're going to be going back over a topic that we've been over previously. And this is kind of a bit of inspiration out of nowhere I suppose. I posted a picture on Twitter recently of a piece of freehand that I'd done and I sort of had a couple of video ideas for something that I wanted to incorporate it into but I ended up actually because I recorded the entire process um, and it was so well received on social media I made the decision to just go through the whole process with you and just sort of give you a bit of a talk through of kind of what I'm thinking and what I'm what I'm doing when I freehand. So uh, as a lot of you know, I do normally paint a lot of 2D anyway, and that is kind of where a lot more of your painting skills can transfer into mini painting when you're starting to look at freehand and stuff like that. So yes, without further ado, let's get into some down cam and I will show you my freehand process. Okay, so you can see I've started out here with a pencil plan and uh, it's just a very rough sketch. I'm just starting to kind of fill in some of the important parts of that with some black to start off with. And you can see here, no particularly fine lines. I'm not being particularly careful. It's rough, it's ready. It's just kind of doing its job. Um, and that's one of the big secrets. If you're a shakier handed painter like me and you want to get stuff like this to work, Put your plan lines in very roughly. Uh, don't sort of over focus when you're putting your plan lines in because uh, you're gonna kind of stress yourself out. Um, I got a lot of hand cramps during this, a lot of pins and needles in my hands. My, my hands are not in very good condition. I'm, I'm just a bit old and a little bit arthritic and just, you know, this kind of stuff can, can sort of take its toll on your hands after a while. So just lots of breaks and uh, lots of just not being, not being too, concerned with neatness initially kind of don't start focusing in on the neatness until you need to so you can see once that black is in i'm now working from the rearmost layer which is the the pages of parchment i'm working from the back to the front uh, the exception being the arrow that's going to go behind everything i'm putting that on last uh, just because it's kind of an easy bit that i can just whip in at the end when my hands are starting to get tired and i need a bit of a rest that's just a really easy part to finish off on but for the most part i'm working from the sort of backmost layer of the uh, of the work getting that filled in and then starting to build in the stuff that's on top of it so just start to kind of put some highlights in and, uh, and this is kind of the big secret here is uh, you need to, to moderate where you spend your sort of concentration and where you, where you spend uh, your effort on getting those really, really fine detailed parts in. So you can see uh, on all of the sort of black areas of the head in the middle here and stuff like that, I'm still not being particularly detailed and careful at this point, even as I'm tracing up to it. There's still sort of little mistakes here and there and uh, really will kind of leave it to the last possible minute where I need to to make any corrections so as to minimize how much time I have to spend doing really fine, really careful work. And so we've got all of this kind of starting to block in now and uh, once I get a few coats on this and it's starting to look solid then we'll start to kind of do some of the, the more sort of textural stuff on it to make it look a bit more like paper. <clears throat> you can see now I'm starting to build in some highlights. I'm just moving up in very slow stages here, just adding little, little bits more of sort of lightness to my paint and uh, working in these nice textural highlights. This being freehand, I always like to imagine freehand as sort of, it wants to look like a painting. You can see here I'm sort of doing a bit of black glazing to, uh, to create some shadows. I want texture and I want sort of lots of different kind of light and depth and shadow changes and stuff like that because I I want it to look like a 2D painting. If I'm going to freehand onto a miniature, I, I want it to look painted. I don't want it to look like a sticker. Okay, so now I'm starting to just do a quick pass to tidy up a few areas of the black bit. It's only just a quick pass, still not super neat. The text, of course, is very scribbly. You don't have to be neat at all with that. Just some very thin black paint and just some random scribbliness, making it all look like culture and cuneiform. Did do that little illuminated red as well. And again, now starting to block in colours. You can see, not even going right up to the edges here and stuff like that, because I know I'm, I know I'm going to be adding other colours. 
So instead of going right up to the edges and doing all of that really detailed, really careful painting that has to be done next to the edges, I save that for the colours that are actually going to live there. And instead of uh, you know filling entire areas with colours that aren't even going to end up there, which is you know inefficient and it tires your hands out a lot quicker it makes you more likely to be shaky makes you more likely to make mistakes so I'm just avoiding all of that just by only really placing paint where it needs to go now it's probably the first time I ever actually have to do any accurate careful lining during this whole process is when I start to frame these flames so that's the that's the first time and by this point I'm probably about 25 30 minutes into painting, maybe even a bit more than that. The whole thing took just over an hour. So I'm probably, yeah, probably around 30 minutes into painting and that's the first time I've had to do any accurate lining. You can see here as I'm building up these yellow highlights, I'm just using really dotty strokes, just kind of jabbing with the tip of the brush, creating little sort of dots and dabs and dots and dabs. A bit of knuckles in the way, I apologize for that. There's not a lot you can really do about it when you're painting at this kind of straight down angle. The only way to give you a good view is to, uh, is to come top down on it. And again, now once we're into the sort of really light highlights, now I'm starting to paint more finely. You see, we a brief moment with the black here where we're being a bit sharper again. But we're really rationing the amount of time that we spend doing any kind of detail lining or any kind of tricky stuff. And that's, that's always been the big secret to my 2D painting style in general, is you, you ration the hard stuff and um, you sort of not only keep your concentration and your motivation locked in a bit easier that way, but if you are, like I said before, someone who suffers from uh, bad hands, someone who gets fatigue in their hands very quickly, someone who shakes a lot, minimizing the number of times you expose yourself to that problem is really gonna help you get a nicer overall result. So we're just starting to build these gray highlights into the black demon face now. And again, these are all just very easy strokes. There's no careful strokes here. And then we save the carefulness for this little black fine line at the end, just some really thin black. And that's the only time where we need to be careful. We're just limiting, always limiting how much difficult painting we have to do. The thing is, even the most difficult freehand will be full of easy parts and difficult parts. This is another quick easy bit that I did at the end, just putting some metal framing around the corners of the book. Um, but yeah, you know, you want to kind of identify those easy parts and those difficult parts and make sure that you sort of space the easy parts out. Don't do them all at once. If you do all the easy stuff at once, then all you're left with is difficult stuff. So again, like this arrow at the end here, really, really easy. The only places where I have to be remotely careful is where it touches other shapes. And as long as I make sure that I'm drawing away from them, if you notice, I, I, I'm always uh, rotating the piece so that I could be pulling the stroke away from the direction of where the sharp detail needs to be. And that's because making strokes down towards your hand is naturally more accurate. It's just more comfortable for your hand to do. So if you always rotate the piece so that every time you have to pull a careful stroke, you're pulling it down towards yourself. And again, that's another thing you can do just to help with that accuracy, help mitigate any shaking in your hands, any problems that you may have with your hands and that's kind of always what I'm thinking about when I'm doing this freehand stuff is is how to make it easy for someone like me who has a lot of physical problems that make doing things like detail and freehand very difficult so you can see as I start to put these highlights in again they're very textural they're very whippy they're very quick strokes uh, and this is only at eight times speed I want you to bear that in mind as well this is not super super sped up it's not at like 2000 speed or anything ridiculous it's at eight times speed so i am working quite fast here as i said you know a, a roughly an hour to finish this whole thing and so you can get a pretty good sort of measure from watching this of how fast i would be going in real life it's uh it's it's not a really considered painstaking process because no painting for for someone like me can be the moment you get into that really painstaking you know minutia level sort of really hyper focused detail my brain is going to switch off my hands are going to give up on me i'm going to struggle the whole time i don't want none of that i want to get nice good sexy looking results that make people go yeah that's cool and so that's kind of the idea behind my whole freehand technique is just to remove as many barriers as possible, make it as accessible as it can be. And all these nice kind of choppy strokes, textural highlighting, minimizing fine lining, all that sort of stuff. 
You see here I'm going into just applying a bit of damage. Uh, there isn't really an easy way as such to do this. I'm trying to make it sort of look chipped back and exposing the red paint underneath as if it's been painted on top of the red paint. Um, again, you know, that whole idea of rotating the piece towards you, that's about the best thing you're gonna do to help yourself. But there you have it. That's all there is to it. So there you have it, that's a complete start to finish of what I'm looking to do when I apply a freehand. Uh, I tend to really like those sort of flat surfaces and those slightly larger surfaces. When it gets to the really small scale of freehand, I find that um, my mechanical skills, my sort of ability to, you know, my fine motor control just kind of leaves me behind a little bit. And so I don't tend to attempt stuff on the sort of really small panels, but I do find on those bigger panels, that's a really nice entry into, into how to be able to sort of get a bit of a grip with freehand and if you've got finer motor control you can probably transfer all of these same techniques down into you know smaller things as well so hopefully it's going to be something that's very useful for a good few of you if you liked the video then of course please do remember to click that like button and of course if you want to see more subscribe to the channel enable those notifications and you will get told by youtube whenever i upload a new video if you're really into what i'm doing over here and you'd like to support me enable me to keep making content and running giveaways and doing all that kind of lovely stuff then i do have a patreon campaign with tiers starting from as little as a dollar a month you can contribute and uh at higher levels you can even get yourself mentioned in the credits which is you know kind of cool kind of cool if that's the sort of thing that you're into anyway folks i shall see you in the next one but thank you very much for watching and goodbye for now